Thank you all for joining us um, here this afternoon to talk about design systems. My name is Cisco Guzman, and I am a director of product management on XD. And uh, one of the areas that I'm interested in learning more about and exploring with all of you, not just today in this workshop, but actually um, I have a feeling we'll be talking about design systems for uh, a little while to come. So I'm really excited to share some of our thoughts with you um, and to learn uh, with you as we go down this journey. Hi, everyone. Mike, hello. Can you hear me? Great, great. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Hoyle. I'm one of the product managers on XD. Um, and just a little background about me. You know, I, really, I first got into design when I was in eighth grade, and I was applying for a STEAM school before those things were cool. And we had to put together a portfolio for what we knew about design. And, and, and the first thing that made me feel challenged uh, at the intersection of design and technology was actually making the probably ugliest website ever created with Dreamweaver. And I remember when XD was first Project Comet, and I read the press release um, about it coming out and um, realizing that it was the tool that I needed when I was a kid and, and um, was really starting to get into um, the depths of design. And I've been a part of the team now for close to two years, um, and I'm really excited to be here with you and to talk to a little bit about design systems today. Awesome. Thanks, Hoyle. So, design systems. In the 80s, we all wanted outfits that were jeans on jeans. Um, in the 90s, we all wanted to be a DJ. And in 2018, we all want a design system, but sometimes we're not actually even sure what a design system is, whether what we have is a design system, whether our design system that we have adopted is working. And in general, this topic and this whole um, part of the design ecosystem that we live and work in um, is a little bit ambiguous. And so we want to just come right out and say that we really are trying to explore and understand this area uh, with you. Catch that auto animate? What we know is that many of today's digital experiences are created using reusable building blocks. This screen, for instance, and we all know this, right? This one single screen is actually made up of a lot of different components, colors, character styles, icons, nav bars. All of these components together are used not just to create this one experience, but actually to create many experiences. In addition to that, the components themselves take on a level of meaning and signification. There's additional metadata that we either ascribe to these components in our own mind. We may add that information in the way of an annotation in a redline spec. We may add it to a website that lets our business partners or people who are consuming our <coughs> designs um, with the kind of information that they need in order to use um, these colors, character styles, and symbols effectively and build experiences um, that are consistent. Now, what's interesting is that like, nobody really, I think, necessarily went to design school specifically to build a design system. And I'm not dissing our design ops people, for reals. All I'm saying is that it's almost like design systems have evolved as a byproduct of a need that we all have to scale the kinds of experiences that we're actually building for our customers. So essentially, said differently, it helps us to create, scale, and manage, and keep all of these different experiences across designers, across teams, across properties. It helps us to keep all of that together so that our customers don't see the seams and the sutures between our organizations and between our teams. Because it's that kind of experience that actually helps our customers to feel at home in our brand or you know, in the expression of, that we're trying to get them to understand. So our goal in this workshop is to help you create 
a basic design system using XD today that will enable you to start simply. And a part of the reason that I say that is that a lot of what we find in the market and in the research that we've done is that there seems to be um, a pretty, there seems to be pretty broad consensus that building a design system is not necessarily the um, perfect solution that we all seem to think it's going to be when we start down um, that, that road. In fact, there are many organizations that actually adopt design systems and then find that they're still experiencing problems and pain points. So really, what I'm trying to say is nobody has figured it out. If you're sitting there in your organization, maybe you could be a freelancer, you could be working with one or two other or 500 other designers. I can assure you from talking to customers of all different sizes that nobody has this figured out. It's like the Wild West. So what we did in our last session was to basically do an overview where we sort of talk about, you know, where essentially this, I talk a little bit about what a design system is and how it's used. And then we went into a demonstration of the XD features um, that can help you to build a simple design system. Then we did some Q&A. But what we'd like to do in this session, did you see that? Yes. What we'd like to do is actually switch the two. The reason we are hardcore freestyling is because what we found is that the reason you are here is really important so that when you, you know, it's like it should be important to us and we want to show you that it's important to us so that when you walk out that door, we have a better sense of whether or not we helped you because that's ultimately what we're trying to do. So what we'd like to do for the next few minutes, you're going to have to scream because you, you can hear it, right? It's a lot of excitement and joy out there that you're going to have to compete with. But if you'll, if you'll play with us, really what we want to do is just have you yell out or um, maybe we have mics. I don't, I don't even know if that's efficient. But if you don't mind screaming, what I'd like to hear are some of the questions that you have around design systems that brought you here today. So feel free to just start yelling some out and then I'll repeat the question back out if people can't hear it. Can it replace your style guide documentation? Yeah. So we have a question around externalizing the, the design system and getting other people to understand it. Um, are you, uh, is your design system currently being, uh, c who is it being consumed by? Internal employees as well as external agencies. External agencies. And then um, does that include developers? Do people want to talk about that as well? Okay, perfect, got it. Okay, what are some other questions? So are there any tools that we recommend to help like Zeppelin and hey, hey. what was the other one? Avocode, specifically to help with specifications and redlining and so on and so forth that are tied to your style definitions. Okay, great. So, yep. What are the basic elements that are required? What are the basic elements that are required in creating a design system? No, he has a resonant, well-modulated voice. He doesn't need your microphone. Yes. Yeah, so what are the elements? Um, how can you externalize it? What are some of the tools that can help you do that? Great. Um, what to do um, when the system works well for some people, but not for everyone? It's a, such a great question. I have a feeling a lot of these questions are, are probably pretty valid for a lot of people. Uh, how granular should the system be before it starts to limit like, further creativity? Like, when, when is enough information to be a springboard? Um, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, with sure. the microphone? It was really um, well said. So how granular? should a design system be before it becomes too explicit and starts to perhaps limit uh, creativity uh, yeah. and use the system as a springboard rather than too much control. Okay, yeah, 
great question. And raise your hand and I'll come to you with a mic. How have you guys bridged marketing and product um, style guides and design systems? How have we bridged marketing and product? Product, got it. Okay, that is, that's, okay, one more. Because, you know, and I said, yeah, we want to get as many of these in there. How do you deal with versioning of design systems? How do you deal with versioning of design systems themselves? That's a great question as well. Okay, so here is what we're going to do. We are going to take a deep breath, Hoyle, and we are going to try to live answer all of those questions using whatever information we have in front of us, okay? Some of it, and here's, here's the part where it gets really juicy. If you have an opinion on something that we are saying and you have knowledge that can help some of your colleagues, feel free to just raise your hand and be like, I have something to add to that. You know what I'm saying? Like colloquium. I learned that word in college. It means we're all going to hang out. It's like not a lecture. It's like a hangout. And it's the last session of Max, so it makes perfect sense. Also, one of the things that I want to point you to, and this sort of gets at um, the point that I made earlier, which is that we are all... That sounds perfect. Yes. So if you want to make a point, Lindsay will be doing Oprah style, running to you and being like, call her, you say. So just let us know by raising your hand and Lindsay will come find you. So one of the things that happened when I was trying to figure out what a design system was, I went to the World Wide Web to, you know, because I was like, I don't know, I, I should probably figure this out. And one of the things that I had a hard time doing and understanding was really how to even vet all of the information that I was encountering. I really didn't even know how to sort through it. So what, um, what Hoyle is going to tell you a little bit about right now is a resource that might help. Cool. Um, can I get the slide? Can you guys hear me? No. Okay. What is it? All right. Hello? 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 Okay, great. Um, so one of the things that we do at Adobe um, in order to empower young creatives is this thing called the Adobe Creative Residency. Um, this year we have a UX UI um, uh, creative resident, Andrea Hawk. Uh, Andrea, if you're here, can you raise your hand? She's here in the back. Say hi. Hi, Yay. Andrea. It's my first time meeting her in person. Hi, Andrea. Um, Andrea, for, for, her pro for her residency, has um, so kindly put together this booklet called The What, How, and Why of Design Systems. And we actually have copies of it for everybody here in this room. Um, I've read through it. It's really, really well done. And um, yeah, give it up for Andrea. Yeah, so don't leave, with, don't leave without getting that. And if we don't get to answer your questions, um, all of them, know that this isn't the only opportunity that you have um, if you fill out that survey, and we'll put the link back up, stay connected with us because we want to start a design systems network that can help to kind of keep the conversation going and hopefully have everyone um, answer, get their questions answered. Okay, so you probably have gone out there, right? And when you hear the word design systems, in all likelihood, um, one of the things that will pop into your mind is one of the many large, complex, well-documented design systems that might that is being used by a large platform or an enterprise or an organization that is really trying to help other designers design in their visual vocabulary. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, but a part of what ends up happening is that it's never really clear how they got there. You know, it's kind of like, can you all hear me? Okay, perfect. Um, you're not necessarily clear exactly on how they ended up there, and you're not really clear on whether you need to be this big of a company to actually create those resources, right? But those resources are all based on a couple of basic principles. So what we did when we looked at the research and we looked at everyone's way of defining design systems, what we found, generally speaking, is that these were the large sort of elements or the, um, the parts of a design system. And 
if we didn't get this right and you disagree with it, by all means, like let us know. We're just trying to form our own definition as well. So here's the first piece that seemed to be held in common. A master document or a library which houses components and symbols. So one part of a design system is an actual design document. It sits inside of a design tool, so it could be Illustrator, it could be in XD, it can be really in any number of products. But what we found was that designers, by and large, like to open a canvas up and start putting things. It's like a big cubby. Like as you go from project to project, you just sort of, you, you, you kind of go like this. You're like, okay, just like put it in there. And that's actually one of the things that we found is that people actually start creating the design system as a progress. It's, it's kind of a progress. It's not like you get up one day and you're like, I'm going to build it today. And then you like go to bed and you're like, ah, we're done, right? It's actually a living document that contains these vector objects. Okay. The next thing that we found is that in addition to the drawn objects, the actual like rectangles and the buttons and the gradients, like all of the actual pieces, there also is metadata, right? There's information, guidance. It can come from brand. It can be um, an annotation around visual style. It can be a commentary on UX patterns that should be used in an application. It could be voice and tone, accessibility information. So you have the drawn object, then you have information that helps you to understand that element in context. That information may live in the design document. It might actually live in someone's brain. It could live in a Google Doc. What we found is that regardless of where you put it, that information exists. And without it, the design document is nearly meaningless. Were you going to say something? Oh. All right. Next. What we found is that some people's definition of a design system, not everybody's, and by the way, if you're looking up here and you're like, I have a design system, but I don't have that, don't feel like you need to go get that. Like, that's, that's one of the big lessons that we're hearing from design systems. It's almost like when I look at Facebook every Saturday morning on my side and I'm like, I don't have an MBA. I don't have, you know what I mean? It's like, don't do that with design systems. The number one thing that I keep reading in the research, and you'll probably read it too if you go out there and consume that information, is go step by step. Identify what your specific needs are and then create a solution for those needs as opposed to trying to sort of outfit yourself with tools because I think that's where, where you can end up in situations where you're trying to bridge a lot of tools and you're not really clear on whether it's solving the final problem. Okay, so the next part of the design system is, is another realm. So right, right now we were first in the realm of the designer we then moved into a realm that might be the realm of the designer, but it might also be other folks, business partners, marketing partners. And now we're in the realm of the developer. This is the realm in which the components are actually being defined as code, code snippets, a framework. Those same components that are represented visually for a designer actually exist really in another form entirely. Finally, and this is, this is a, a really interesting uh, piece that the research sort of surfaced, which is that even if you have all three of those pieces, there's usually another layer undergirding that entire structure that is made up of human practices. They're behaviors that people actually take on with regards to the design system. And I think this gets to some of you know, the questions or the comments around, you know, how do you get people to sort of adhere to it or how do you keep everyone consistent? In other words, you could have all three of those components not have the fourth one and you probably wouldn't be as far as you would want to be. So one of the things that... So I, talk, I mentioned this before. 
But one of the things that we seem to be finding in the research is that the recommendations from people who have built, keep in mind, this is not coming from me, this is coming from people that have built design systems and then look back on their experience of doing so and think, what advice can I give to other designers and other organizations that are trying to do this? And what most of them say is, start small. Like, simplify your approach by maybe starting with that design document. And in a bit, we can actually dive into a very abridged workflow that we can show you in XD of how you can do that and then combine it with design specs to basically specify what all of your colors, character styles, and symbols are, have one place for developers and other individuals to download them from. So that's start small. Keep it simple, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. And then lastly, scale is needed. And I think this part is really, really important. Um, a part of what we found when we talked to customers that had sort of attempted to take on design systems is that it's almost like they needed a separate team to actually manage the whole design system. And that seems to be the number one reason why design systems actually fail. Because they're based on a concept of policing rather than guidance, inspiration, so on and so forth. So I'm not saying we have any answers, but that certainly seems to be at the, at the core kind of of the problem, right? Wrong slide. <laughs> All right, let's see, where was I? No, that was it. Okay. So why don't we do this? In order to answer some of the questions that were asked around, like what are the basic components of a design system and combine it with the handoff piece and how to get people um, on the same page around the style elements and uh, the redlining, let's go to this workflow. Sure, sounds great. Hello. Hi everyone, um, can you hear me? Yes. So, you know, when Cisco was putting up that screen of all the different design systems that are out there, uh, be it material design, be it lightning, raise your hand if you first Googled that and you saw those examples and you had no idea where you, how to get started. Because I did. <laughs> um, and I think the, 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 miss, uh, the thing that's, that's the biggest problem about design systems, as Cisco mentioned, is that it, there's something that um, you know, large enterprises uses, but also it's something that c can go as small as a one to two person team. I remember really vividly a customer visit I had um, in Vancouver earlier last year where it was a guy working at an agency and he said, you know, every single project that I do for a client, I always have to start a design system from scratch. I'm lucky if I get a logo and I'm really, really lucky if I get some colors. And with XD, what we're trying to do is keep it, again, keep it simple, but also cover that full gamut of the use cases. What I'm going to show you today is a really simple version of covering that first use case of um, how do you start simple and then scale from there. Um, and, you know, if that's not what you're looking for today, you know, we have uh, lots of other sessions going on. I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, so what we think, when we think of a design system, we're really thinking of a couple of things. There are colors, there are character styles, logos, iconography, components that, that have um, various metadata that's associated, images, the list kind of goes on and on. Um, and what we have in XD is this beautiful big canvas where you can edit all of the things on your design system um, and um, a means of publishing them onto the web. So just going really quickly about um, some of the things in, in XD that can help you get started. Uh, in the assets panel, these are all the different colors and character styles that I've used in my document. First of all, just a show of hands, how many of you use XD or have like actually used it before? Okay. Awesome. That's more than last year, that's awesome. Okay, and then how many of you use the assets panel? 
Okay, so actually like a, a, a slightly fewer. Um, one of the things that I think like one of the most underutilized parts of XD that can be incredibly powerful in doing some of the thing in at least starting you down the road is the assets panel. So the next time you hop into XD, try some of this um, because I think this starts starts you down the road of at least defining what your components are. That's really what that um, what that. Uh, part of the, the interface is for. It's where you create your canonical definitions. Thank you, Cisco. Um, so here, you know, I've got all of these different colors that I have to, I've defined as a part of my design system. And this is really my working document for um, wh where I'm going to scale my designs from. I'll show you in just a second an example of something that I've created using the design system. And I'll show you how to create associations from this source document to any other instances where you're using um, your design system. But here again, you know, in the assets panel, I've got my colors. And I can, or I can of course, go in and double click to, uh, to rename them. Um, I can organize them in any way that I choose. Same thing for character styles. And of course, there's an entire um, there's an entire row of all the different symbols that I've used in here. And getting stuff into the panel is super easy, right? Like all you have to do is click on an element um, on the canvas itself, yep. like that forest green color or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you hit. Let's actually do it. Yep. yep. So I'm going to take this. I'm actually just going to delete this from the assets panel real quick. But again, you can see that it's picked up my fill color. My fill color is this dark green. I can hit this plus button here, and that adds it with the hex code to uh, my assets panel. Now, the cool thing about the assets panel is that every edit you make in here is actually global. So if I'm in the beginning bits of defining what it is that, what the style of my project is going to be, I'm probably still experimenting a little bit, and I don't want to commit to one thing and then have to go and make a bunch of changes down the road. Well, with the assets panel, we know that you're doing things um, design, the design process is not, is not linear, and you shouldn't have to start with having things already super pre well defined before going down the process. So, just with a simple edit of the assets panel, you see that every single instance where I've used that color green changes. So, this is really, really great if you're trying to explore, if you're not really quite sure what direction you want to take your project. Another thing, a cool trick with the assets panel, is I've got two, these two kind of shades of green. And if um, at any point I feel that they're perhaps too similar, let's say it's let's say it's these two greens, what I can actually do is copy is right click on edit, copy that hex code, right click on the other green and paste, and it merges those two conflicts into one. So we know that one of the things that's always happening is that. Um, you, don't, you never want to have uh, more than one instance of something, and it's really frustrating because um, you never know what that one single source of truth is. So again, just, just these small things that um, help you keep organized along the way. Now, I've kind of gone in and I've defined a bunch of things in my design system, and let's put that into use a little bit. So let's take this button, for example. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it. And I know that it's a symbol because it has this green border that's outlining it. If I'm ever sure, if I'm ever not sure what it's called or where it is in my assets panel, I can right click on this and I can say reveal symbols and assets. My viewport in my assets panel will actually jump to where it is. Um, there we go. And uh, um, the same workflow works for colors, the same workflow works for character styles. So I'm just going to take this symbol, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come here in my consuming document where I've started to build out a lot of the different experiences regarding real. Before we go there, um, one of the things uh, that makes a symbol a symbol is that one, when you change one instance, you change them all. And so a part of what we know, um, the sort of the challenge with scaling your design is that some of those changes um, happen really downstream and we're trying to avoid you having to go change them all individually. And so in that one example where the symbol was created, much like you could change the character style and the color, you can make style changes to a symbol and it'll propagate throughout the entire canvas. 
So now imagine taking that one notion of a symbol and starting to nest them together in different combinations. So that helps you to basically start building components, which is that third class of element that is really a necessary part of building a basic design system. Absolutely. So again, just going back to this, I'm taking this symbol and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to find the place, let's say I'm defining this, this checkout experience when I want to use voice. So I'm going to hit paste. I'm going to move this down. And I want you to take a look at this symbol just here for one second. You see that there's a little green icon there. Um, what that green icon means is that this instance of this symbol is actually linked back to the original source document. So what does that mean? So if I go back to the source document, and let's say I make a change. This is where I'm defining all of my styles, and this is, this is what I want every single instance of this symbol to look like across not just my design system document, but all consuming documents. So let's say I change the corner radius a little bit. I think that, you know, I've heard from Apple that, corner, that rounded corners are a better design. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to come here. And you notice that the badge has turned from green to blue. What that means is that there's actually an update that's available for my um, design system or for my symbol. If, I'm, if, I can, if I hover over this, actually, I'll change it to a different color just so it's easier to see. I'm going to make this maybe a darker darker gold. Okay, fine. Bright. How about bright, bright pink? Yes. There we go. I'm going to hit save. Again, if I hover over this, it gives me a preview of what that looks like in the context of my assets panel. But what's really cool and coming in a future release is that every single instance where the symbol is on the canvas will, auto, will also get a preview as well. Yeah, just in, in the next few months, we'll have on canvas preview and if you're seeing this and you start working with it and you find that you need additional functionality in the assets panel, go to user voice and upvote it or suggest it. We look at user voice. I have a stream, the stream from user voice comes directly to me in Slack and many of us do that. That's really how we build product. Um, so we really can't encourage you enough to, to do that. Yep. And so I'm previewing my change. And if I want to accept it, that's as simple as a click. I click to update, and now I'm back to my great green icon, and that, uh, that's been updated. And so now imagine that that button existed in 50 places throughout your entire flow. And imagine now that one source document, a master document that you um, designate as being a master document, can now create with a very simple workflow, a series of cascading changes that you can accept on a document by document basis. One of the things that we try to do with XD is to remove friction everywhere. Um, if you look at some of our competitors, if you look at how things have historically been done, you know, you'll usually find that in order to link something between documents, you'll have to do a pull down or some sort of a modal. What we try and do is to, to meet you where you are and to find the really natural places for a workflow where um, it's the least friction way possible. It's the most frictionless way possible. It just seemed like the way that most people worked as we watched people work was to copy and paste. It seemed like a natural way to take one element and add it to another. So let's now, so now if you look back at our little pink slide where it was like master document and then there's a, a handoff, right, that happens at some point. Let's take a look at how you can take this idea of a uh, master design document that has all, all of your elements and how you can actually start um, radiating out to folks who are non-designers. Because presumably, you can share that XD document with other designers in your organization and they can copy and paste symbols from it. And you can maintain ownership of that document you might have to set up some rules that we can help you with. But that actually gets to the practices and behaviors piece that I talked about before, right? Like, no technological solution is ever going to replace our ability to communicate with one another, um, our expectations, our behaviors, and our rules around how to, how to um, 
use the design system itself. Yep. And so one of the things that we wanted to do um, while looking at this area, again, is to make things really simple and approachable. We and got a question over there. We got a question in the yes. back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run down to you. Give me one sec. Do it. Run. You're not running. That's not running. Hi. Um, we had a question of whether or not you could lock the master so that people can't accidentally change the master yes. okay. symbol. Okay. So, one of the things that we know is that we have some enhancements to do here. And we definitely have some thoughts on how to do that. Um, what we've been uh, talking about is really con um, increasing our focus on the ways that teams and designers work together in the course of the next year. So I think you can expect to see um, a lot of work in that area. One of the things that we do basically, maybe you can relate to, to this as well, is that we define an MVP for ourselves of what we're going to ship with. And we have hopes and dreams and we're like, you know, let's put this in it and we kind of craft this, craft this vision and design helps us to craft a vision of like what we're all gonna build together. And then we look at, okay, what is the absolute basic uh, functionality that designers need? And so what we decided to do is to ship with linked symbols in this workflow let you, let you use it with whatever system it is that you're working with today, let you get warmed up with it, and then stay in conversation with us and let us know how you want that locking to work. Is that at the project level? Is that um, by role? Is it by, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the safest way, it's kind of like our principle of like start small, start simple, scale as you need it. I think that's how we're approaching it. Not that we didn't want you to have it or that it wasn't important, but simply that we didn't have a clear idea of how you'd want us to, to do it. Yep. Yep. The okay. Thing or yeah, good question. So the question is around libraries and how libraries integrate. I really like this Tony Robbins thing. It's so fun. I just walk around, talk to people. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that we had thought that XD would really do is to work with two surfaces. And if this is confusing, then just like throw some tomatoes. Um, essentially, what the, what the uh, assets panel helps you do is to define the thing, the elements that you want to reuse throughout your document. So, so as Hoyle showed, editing those individual elements propagates the changes. But then the question is, well, what if the elements that you want to bring in and have inherited changes from are actually coming from, say, Illustrator or Photoshop? And that's the role of CC libraries. So if you just do a, do you want me to do the library thing or do you want to? So um, I'm just going to show us an example. We have integration with Creative Cloud Libraries in XD. And really, again, we're using the document as the source of truth here. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to replace some of these images real quick with um, some images that I have in Creative Cloud Libraries. And one of the things that you noticed at the very top is that you actually do have colors and character styles at the top of this. And I think the question was, how do those defined styles relate to what you have in the assets panel? And I think the answer, simply put, is that the ones that are defined at the document level will scale across XD and you're within your document. It's like inter-document. And the, what you've defined in CC libraries helps you to scale across any designer in Creative Cloud who may or may not be working in XD. So if you've got a visual designer who's only doing iconography and typography in Illustrator, this is your way of working with them. Now the question of whether we're done there, certainly not. We know that we, have, we can make a tighter integration. Maybe you want us to build a different way of integrating them. Let us know. Go in there, work with the assets panel, and then tell us how you see it working. Yep. So just quick demo on CC libraries again. So these are images that I've created with Photoshop. 
Um, if you hover over it, it actually tells you what program it was originally created in. So this works with both vector graphics as well as, um, as bitmaps. I'm just showing it with images here. Um, but again, bringing content in from CC libraries is as simple as a drag and drop. If at any point I want to actually edit the image where it was created, I can right click, hit edit. That will open up the program in which I've created the, um, the asset in. In this case, it was an image. So I created it in Photoshop. And basically, this is the original source of truth for that asset. And if I go in here, and let's say I go in and I grayscale it, and I'll hit Save, that rendition then is being uploaded to Creative Cloud. And every single instance where I've used that asset automatically gets updated because of the linking through Creative Cloud libraries. Are you ready to have your minds blown? Now take that, right? So you take something from Creative Cloud, and then you use the assets panel to propagate it throughout your, your document panel. Much like auto-animate, right, we're releasing these functions that we know in the hands of designers and people that are very creative who know how to weave gold out of straw, right, that you're able in many cases to create the layers of nesting and cascading changes that many of us actually want to be able to create. And again, if that doesn't solve the problem, we're, st we're, we're all ears and we're still building more functionality. Yep. So again, now going back to the piece where yes. well, now I have a style sheet. How do I go about sharing that with people? How do I get that cool, slick material design thing on the web that's actually the whole purpose of it, of it being a web URL is that it's accessible to everyone? Well, NXT, this is, um, we have a, a notion of a design spec. And I can publish a design spec. I've already gone ahead and published one. Um, again, and there's different types of permissions that we can put on this. If I create a public link, it means that anybody with the link can access it. If I, um, we can also require a password, which means that you have to type the password in to get it. Or I can create a private link, which means that only folks that I've, specific, that I've specifically invited can access um, that particular document. I've already gone ahead and uploaded it. I'm just going to click this button and open it up. And here what I've done is now I get kind of that a uh, hundred foot view of what's going on in my document. If I go in here and I select this artboard, for example, all of my colors, my text, and my character styles are already pre-populated here in the assets panel for me. Getting things out of design specs and knowing what the names are, see the names are associated, is again as simple as a click. It'll copy the hex code and you can actually change between the different types. Same thing with character styles, again, this is simple as a click, and I can paste the font name. But where this gets really interesting is where I have some assets that I actually want to extract. So this becomes your source of truth. What I've done here is for these layers on the desktop editing application, I've gone and I've marked this in my layers panel. There's a feature that's called mark for batch export. Traditionally, in most tools, what happens is you can go in and you can mark a layer for batch export. What happens when you go to File, Export, Batch, is that you tell XD what format you designed it at, and we export it for every single one of the formats um, that's appropriate for what it is that you're trying to design for. So if I design for the web, it's 1 and 2x, iOS, it's 1, 2, and 3x, and Android, you know, different options, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the most painful parts about having a shared um, centralized source of truth is also packaging everything and and uploading it to that central source of truth. So again, if you mark uh, specific layers for batch export and you upload it to design specs, once I open up design specs, the assets are right there, ready to be uploaded or downloaded. And again, it recognizes whether vectors are vectors. So in this case, it's an SVG, and I can just download it straight from the web URL. Or I can actually do a PNG, but we you know, try to keep things the way they are. So again, going back to this, I can multi-select everything. I can hit download. That automatically puts it in a zip folder. And if I open that up, those are all of my SVGs ready to go. So this is a little hokey, but um, I, was, I was laying in bed uh, 
the other night, you know, just like thinking about stuff. And I, you know, I was like, and all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, you can hack a style guide inside of design systems already. Because if you can mark stuff for export and you're getting measurements, I was like, you've got to put that in there, right? Like you, and that's a part of really what I'm getting at. We have the basic functionality inside of XD today that can actually help you create many of the basics that you need in order to create a basic uh, uh, design system. There are pieces, however, that have actually started to come up around that specifically around how these bridge into development, which I think we still have a few minutes to get into. This is we're going until what time? Uh, three forty. Three forty. Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay. So let's see this. Oh, we got a question. Is there a way to keep that documentation about the asset there? Yes. Yeah, so the question is, is there a way of keeping the documentation on the asset here? This is a part of why currently this is a little bit of a hack, right? Instead of ha having an actual function that is like an annotation function, we in this particular design just added the annotations into the design directly. Now, that doesn't mean that's what we're going to have forever, right? It just means that right now with the basic functionality that we have, you can build a simple design system. But, and a part of what I'll show you momentarily is that obviously we need more functionality there and you can expect us uh, to keep adding stuff to it. So I want to do a really quick check-in. I love check-ins, right? They're like hugs, but professional. Um, so one of the things that I want to do is just check in and see how we're tracking um, to answering some of the major questions um, that were asked. If we have not yet answered your question and you asked it before, would you mind re-asking the question and I'm going to make sure that we answer it before we leave. So just raise your hand, I'll come and I'll... And we'll, remind, we'll just do a refresh. And I know the component to development um, is one workflow that we haven't touched on. We'll touch on it momentarily. Any of the other questions around like the basics of the design system, how to share it with people? Anything at all? Can you export uh, like colors and font libraries from the asset panel? So like say uh, an ASC file that you could then share. Like, are you able to do that? C could you hear it? I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the question was, could you, can you export the colors uh, and character styles from the assets panel? No, but that's a great suggestion. How would you see, see, and I was about to go into PM mode. I'm like, how would you see that working? Not now, Cisco, not now. But really, that's how we work, right? It's like someone will say, like, this is my need, and then we want to find out. Um, that's definitely something that, that we should consider. One of the other questions that we've been asked is, okay, so I've curated this assets panel, right? I just want to share the whole thing. How do I share that whole thing? Here's, um, here's my recommendation to you. This is not a done conversation, right? We're, we're building XD every day. That's what we show up to do. And every month we have releases. And what we put in those releases are those types of features that you find most useful. So if you'll, we'll put the, at the end of the, the session, we'll put that survey link back up. And if you'll give us your name and, and email address, then we'll reach back out to make sure that we find out exactly how you think that should work. And another question over here. Yep. Um, do you guys have anything for navigation animation for how the different elements connect to one another? Uh, uh, interesting. So this is like design specs for interactions? That's correct. Yeah, so that's definitely something that we've heard from people in the past, which is, okay, in the like now that it's a design and prototyping and sharing application, how can I help my developers to understand the specifications of the transitions and so on and so forth? So inside of design specs today, you can get information on the duration, the easing of um, the transitions that are supported inside of, of the application. So, um, for instance... Did you put any uh, transitions in here, Hoyle? Nope. See, of course he didn't. All right. I'll show you afterwards. But essentially, if you had added, um, if you had added a transition between these artboards, the developer would see in their property inspector 
would see a definition of what the duration and easing of the transitions would be. A part of what we try to do with XD is to treat it as a system, right? So when we like launch one feature, we try to make sure that it's supported in the rest. There's another question here. Yep. Could you take those assets, let's say this is all ready to go, could you take all those assets and shoot them over to CC libraries for people to use in InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator? Not currently, but we've gotten that request for sure. So definitely um, upvote that one. That will help to prioritize it. Do the different elements have states, like a button has a hover state or press state or those kind of things? Not currently, um, but it's definitely an ask that we are um, looking at because it's clear that, and this is, this is actually, I think, starting to bridge now into um, where we're headed, right? Which I can, you know, I can touch on a, a few of those points. But essentially, the ability, right now what designers are doing is they're taking one button and then they're def you know, drawing it basically like 1,400 times, right? Because of all the different states, um, the contrasts with background. It's, it, and then, so it's difficult to define, difficult to stay consistent with, and then difficult to actually manage and find the right thing the next time that you need it. So we're definitely looking at that problem and trying to figure out how our next um, set of features can help deal with that. So my question relates to building a design system that also supports, also supports print initiatives. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm currently rebuilding an entire design system that's both digital and print. Yeah. Um, those that need print uh, assets n are not necessarily on the cloud at all. I would need to download assets and grab fonts and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's part of a, like a future workflow. I have a I have a feeling it the. Pr I used to be a print designer, and so my instinct would be to have all of those elements inside of CC libraries, simply because the because all of those workflows are already supported. Uh, I think I'm a little embarrassed because I actually I'm pretty sure you can share CC libraries with a public link, right? That's so bad, I should know that. Bad, let's go. Talk to me afterwards, give me your email address. I'll, f I'll follow up. Okay, we're, I'm starting to see folks starting to leave. Thank you so much for coming up here and grabbing your book and, and actually coming by. Um, one of the last things that I'd like to um, leave you with uh, is just a little bit about how we're seeing the problem of design systems uh, how we're going to address some of the complicated workflows that live beyond kind of the realm of the designer. And this is not actually product as much as thoughts, right? And kind of how we're seeing things. Okay. Oh, I'm live. All right. So. The last time we saw this deck, you know, we had defined the design system and we're like, okay, yes, yeah, Cisco, we get it. I've defined my styles inside of XD. I'm using the assets panel, love that. Um, we have cascading um, linked symbols, that's great. But my design system is actually um, bridges several workflows. So one of the things that we found when we talked to designers um, was that and let me take a step back. Design systems are not new. Those of us who have been designing for 10,000 years know that like, design systems are actually inherent to how we think. In the days of print, when someone would say, oh, you know, Cisco, will you build me a brochure or whatever? I'd be like, okay, give me what you have and then let me start from there. And what I would do is I would take those files, I'd take the letterhead, the business cards, and I'd open up a big document, right? And start creating consistency and components for myself so that I could do the work. Um, so that notion is a notion that actually is an old design problem. Now, what's become more interesting is that the number of workflows and the people who are actually working with components and the design system has kind of increased and become more complex. 
So the part that we all, most of us kind of um, live and work in is this realm, the realm of the designer um, who is drawing and editing components and they're using uh, the types of tools that we've already talked about like XD and Illustrator. Then you have developers who are inspecting and translating those designs using uh, maybe design specs or they're using a num you know, any number of other products to try to understand what that um, design uh, intent is and translating that and mapping it into code. And then you have contributors, people who are marketers, who are not necessarily either designers or developers and have a totally different set of needs um, than either one of those two parties. And essentially, each workflow and each workspace has its own set of needs, right? It's not like you can just send your marketing partner the XD file. Sometimes you think you should be able to and be like, I don't understand, it's so simple, it's so intuitive, it's so lightweight, why can't you? But it just, it's, it doesn't work. That's not the workflow in which they are. And so what we know and what we've found is that building these design systems and working with all of these different tools is incredibly painful for everyone, right? I'm just saying to you right back what you already know instinctively because you end up with these basic problems, right? Which is like the designer will uh, build something, a developer tries to build that in code you can't actually get exactly what you asked for and so you end up in a situation where like the design document is no longer accurate and the component is not actually what was approved. What's the source of truth? So there's a new level of complexity that's kind of come in. A designer takes an existing component that's already built in code, right? So you, you built a button, it lives in code and then you um, make a change to it. Suddenly, it's not the button that's live. And so we know that all of, that this cascading sort of problem that we try, that we sort of essentially addressed in the design workflow with linked symbols actually finds itself replicating um, into the other workflows. Sometimes your developers will say things to you like, you know, I just need a little more context on what it is that you've changed, you know, or I need to understand this a little bit more in order to be more efficient. Sometimes sending them a new design spec doesn't really help them, right? So what I'm really getting at is that these new, uh, that these types of problems that we're talking about are definitely pain points that we see and hear people having. I don't have any answers today, but what we wanted to do was to make sure that you understood that today you can start building a design system in XD and sort of start getting your own house in order from a design perspective, start creating, defining those styles, seeing them all the way through, um, through design specs into a way that people can consume while we continue to work with you to build some solutions around these areas that we know are much more complex. And so I, even though I don't have a lot of answers for you, I hope that that helps to address some of the questions that um, were happening out there that were a little bit more related to um, bridging the workflow with, with developers. Are there any burning hot questions? I don't, I'm a pleaser, so like the thought of any one of you leaving without getting your question answered is just, it's tearing me up inside. So seriously, let's have one last round of um, yell out your question. Oh yeah. In terms of the export, is it possible to um, to have this be the final product so I can just cut the developer out altogether? Oh, the mad, the, the the holy grail question. It's come up. Um, that is, you know, what's I I I don't know. I don't know. That's I. What we know here's what we know that developers don't like code that comes out of any product right? Because that's their domain. 
what we want to do is to work with you to um, to make to take away the pain points so that people are able to work um, on the things that they want to work on. So maybe someday we're not there yet. That's a good question. That's one. That's a hot topic. I'm trying to find the survey link. Any other questions? Yes. Hello. So, Cisco, you said uh, that it's difficult to create production-ready code in a product like XD, but what about competitor products like uh, Framer, FramerX? That's production-ready code in an environment where a designer can design prototypes. Yeah, Are you I doing mean, doing anything to to compete with products like Framer. One of the things that I would say is we know that we have more work to do in terms of thinking about what our approach is going to be. I'll be honest with you, when I think about what we're doing, I don't necessarily see us as competing with other design products. I see us as trying to f basically solve problems that have not been solved yet. One of the things that I think we need to look out for is to ensure that whatever solution we create is not reliant on any particular stack. I think it's really important for us to try to understand where it, it's up to us as a company, as Adobe, to really liberate and empower creative individuals to do what it is that they do best and to create something that is going to be future-proofed. So I don't know, I, I don't, I frankly, I'm not a developer. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I'm not sure that, that I have the answer, but we are going to continue to look at it. I think you, you, can, you can expect to see more stuff from us. Yeah, I think we have a few more questions. We got, we got some time. And for those of you who are leaving, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. We're going to keep taking a few more questions. Thank you. Yep. I just want to make sure I'm fully understanding libraries and like the assets and styles. So can you bring in character styles and colors from CC libraries and they will become those asset? Yep. And then vice versa. So can you also develop it in XD and then have it become a style in libraries and have them linked? The first, yes. So you can consume, you can apply. Stuff that you built from, in Illustrator or Photoshop yes. existing yes, styles. Yes, absolutely. And the second piece is coming. Okay. Yeah, so my question was, can you apply uh, asset styles on top of each other? So if I had three depths of drop shadow, can I have drop shadow as an effect in the asset library? And can I apply that on top of a button as a symbol? So multiple styles. Multiple styles, like Cascade. Yeah, I'm, it's, on the, it's definitely in user voice. And it's definitely, I think there are some people who would love to see that. I would say upvote it and let us know that that's what you want. Any other final questions before? Oh, yeah. All right. Last question. Um, this isn't really style guide specific, but can you import any kind of creative from Sketch into XD? I can. Uh, the question was, can you import from Sketch to XD? Um, so the answer to that, I'll take that one. Um, we know that your content can exist in a bunch of different places and a bunch of different products. Um, we view, really view as the X, XD as the place where all of that comes together. So the answer to that is yes. You can import your designs, whether they were created in Sketch, whether they were created in Photoshop, whether they're created in Illustrator, and it opens it natively in XD. So all the layer names, all the text, images are images, vectors are F vectors, all the styles are applied. Um, it's pretty much full fidelity from what you'd expect. So. Yeah. Right. Well, um, thank you guys a lot for your time. Hope you enjoyed Max. And uh, please fill out our survey if you get a chance. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. And I hope you guys had a great time at Max.